Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to a blood splattered vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Dracula. And today we're going to talk about Car. It's a killer pumpkin movie. It's a killer pumpkin movie brought to us by Hulu and director Justin Harding. Now, this movie is exactly what it looks like on the tin. It's a movie about a pumpkin that goes on a killing spree at a pumpkin carving contest. It's Treevenge for Halloween. Exactly. It's it's exactly what it is. Yeah. And there are other characters and there are other plot points in this movie, but let's be real. You're not here for that. You're here to see the pumpkin slaughter people. And holy shit, does this movie start off right off the bat with a fucking murder spree? Yep. This movie starts and doesn't stop until the pumpkin's dead. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, oh, guess that's it. I guess right, that's it. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's oh, it. Oh, well, wait, wait. The, I, guess, I guess we should talk a little bit more about it. You know what? Movie. You're right. We should, we should talk more about it. Okay. So the idea of this movie is it's a pumpkin carving contest at this town festival after there's been this really awful, like, chemical spill in the town. Yeah. So the mayor, who's also the person who kind of owns the company that did that spill, is trying to save face with this festival to try to get people back on his good side. But unfortunately, the chemicals that spilled end up altering the pumpkins. Yeah. So one of the pumpkins that is brought to the pumpkin carving contest by a dude who's stoned out of his mind yep. is brought to the contest, turns out to be sentient, watches its own people getting slaughtered in the pumpkin contest by all the people carving the pumpkins. And then it snaps. And then it snaps and does that to the people. Yep. Some of the cool things about this pumpkin is that it's not just like a pumpkin headed monster like pumpkin head or dark harvest. No, it's a pumpkin that gets up on its vines and walks yes. around. It walks around like a spider, spider. on yeah. the vines. The effects in this movie are great. Yeah, yeah. It's it's obviously split between like a CGI pumpkin and a puppet. Yes, and both look good. Both look good. Yeah. Both look really good. There's never a point in which like your immersion's broken by a really bad effect. Yeah. The effects are great and serviceable for the movie especially the pumpkin puppets. Yes. <laughs> I love all the puppetry in this. And there's a high body count in this because a lot of these people attending this festival do not make it by the end of this movie. After the pumpkin goes on the rampage, it already racks up a body count of five. Yeah. And then after that point, after it's done the initial slaughter, it turns into like a standard monster movie. There's a monster in a location. These people are trapped in the location, trying to get out of the location away from the monster. And the monster is picking them off one by one. Yeah. Standard monster movie formula. It's Alien with a pumpkin. Yes. <laughs> Except unlike Alien, my empathy in this movie was more for the pumpkin than anyone else. Oh, yeah. Like, I felt <laughs> a little bit bad for the gay couple because yeah. they're like, oh... Oh, I felt bad for them on the level of they truly loved each other and they were in the closet and that is tragic. But yeah. at the same time, I know that mayor was behind that whole chemical spill. Only gets so much empathy from me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and for Supernatural fans, the mayor is played by the guy who played Garth the werewolf. DJ Qualls, for all you real ones out there, he was the new guy in The New Guy. It was really cool to see DJ Qualls finally playing a queer character himself. Yeah. He often does doesn't get those roles. Yeah. So it was really cool to see him get one in this movie. In a movie that's definitely in his wheelhouse. A oh, monster yeah. movie with a killer pumpkin. Yeah, a good, dumb monster movie. So this is a full-on B movie, but it is a B movie that is self-aware that it's a B movie. It's a comedy. It's a comedy filled with comedians. All the actors in this movie that aren't like the main teenage cast are all comedians of some stripe. Yeah. I can never remember the name of the guy, of the super stoned guy, but he's in everything. I know, the dude Usually, from Reservation Dogs. Yeah, for some reason, he always plays the stone guy. Yeah. You know? I mean, I think it's just the way he looks. It and is. He's also it really is. good at it. Yeah. And I blame that guy, even though I know it's actually the filmmakers who did this, but that goddamn song he listens to throughout this movie, <laughs> I want to get stoned, I want to get high. Hi. That was in my head <laughs> for a few days after watching this movie. <laughs> Which kind of gives you the tone of this movie. This is the perfect fucking B movie to watch while stoned. Oh, yeah. It's a movie that is made for people to fucking grab their popcorn, get out their bong, yeah. and just watch the fucking oh, it'd probably be a, it'd be a vape these or days. Or a vape, or yeah. a vape, mm -hmm. and fucking watch the pumpkins slaughter a bunch of teenagers and stupid townsfolk. Yes. <laughs> 
Now, I will give this movie one thing. Uh, we talked about Stream in our last vlog, and in Stream, I talked about how outside of the main character actors, the non-character actor main cast was kind of boring. I think the main cast in this were better than oh, that. Oh, I agree. I agree. They were actually engaging. I actually cared about the things that were happening yeah. to them. The teenagers, they knew the assignment, and they did a good job, and they were funny, too. Yes. Which is good, because one of the things that kind of felt weird about Stream was that all the character actors are chewing the scenery, but then the main cast is like acting like they're in a normal movie. Yeah. So there's like a dissonance there. Yeah, 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 because it, it felt like sometimes some of the regular actors yeah. weren't quite picking up what the others were laying exactly. down. In this movie, everyone's on the same page. Yeah. And I think that's partially because the main cast outside of like the character actors playing all like the small comedic parts, the main cast consists of characters that are supposed to be theater kids. Yes. So they're already kind of goofy and over the, over the top. Yeah. Like the one who is just into improv puppetry. Yes. <laughs> The improv puppetry bit was fucking, I was cackling. I was like, <laughs> that shit was hilarious. I like the many ways the pumpkin's able to kill people in this movie because they have the conceit that it has these vines that can just grow forever on it. Yeah. Stab someone and lift them off the ground and then like rip them apart with it or it yeah. will like- Oh, actually my favorite detail is the fact that, okay, so it's got these vines. It can just pierce people to death with yep. these vines. But in most scenes where it kills someone, one of the vines has a knife. Yes. <laughs> you kind of realize as they're running through a lot of the bodies towards the end of the movie that it's doing to the bodies what they did what to the pumpkins. What they did to the pumpkins, yeah. People are being carved and given jack-o'-lantern faces in their bodies. Oh, the other cool detail about the pumpkin is that it can take over your body by making little vines go through it, go through yeah, your body yeah. and take over your limbs. A person's just completely decapitated and it pretends to be them at one point. Yeah. <laughs> This movie is for fans of movies like Cocaine Bear, right? Yes. Like that's oh, the wavelength yeah. oh, this movie's yeah. going on. Pretty good double feature with Cocaine Bear. There's even Bear. a car scene, much like yep. Cocaine Bear, where they're being chased in a car by the fucking pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it does not have beloved character actress uh, Margot Martindale scraped on the pavement. No, it doesn't have that, no. It was much lower budget than much Co lower budget. Cocaine Bear. Yes, yes. <laughs> but just as dumb and just as fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All I'm saying is the only thing the movie's really missing is a uh, beloved character actress, Margot Martindale. <laughs> Fair. And aren't most movies really? I think most movies When are. you get right down Actually, to it. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree. <laughs> I think if you just want to turn your brain off and watch a dumb, silly monster movie comedy, this movie will give you exactly what you want. Oh, yeah. It is currently available on Hulu. It is a Hulu original movie. It was a special they did for their Huluween series, uh, along with Mr. Crockett. The guy who's in Mr. Crockett is also in this Also movie. in this, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mr. Crockett is also in this. He plays the, uh, the news reporter. The news reporter, yeah. Who's reporting on the festival and trying to get everyone to spill on the chemical spill, but they're all trying to avoid that topic. He's great in what little yes. he is in this movie. Yes. He's fucking great. Uh, Mr. Crockett we'll talk about at some point because I really fucking love that movie, but uh, Jack has only watched half of it yeah, so I've far. Yeah, so. I was only able to see half of it so far, yeah. Let us move on to the spoilers so we can talk about uh, who survives this movie and some of the details we didn't talk about in the non-spoiler section. The one character I will say I felt the most bad for when they finally bit it was the security guard dude. Mm. Who, to be fair, yeah. is one of the gay couple in the movie. Yeah, you feel real bad for that, that guy. That guy he's, does he's everything. Doing his best. He does everything in his power to make sure other characters make it. But you know he's not going to make it because he's not part of the main cast. He's, yeah. He's a side character. <laughs> yeah, he trucks along, though. He does. He does. Is there anything really that you can spoil about it's this movie? It's a standard monster movie movie formula. Yeah. There's not much you can spoil. Characters are going to be trying to get from location A to location B, and the monster's going to grab one of them at some point and kill them yeah. on the way there. And then they're, they're slowly going to be picked off until we're with the final, like, survival character. Yeah, yeah. So the real spoiler is if the main character and her brother survive. Yeah, which, uh, they do. Yeah, they do. The main character, her brother, and her lover survive. Yeah, and uh, their friend, who looks like she gets killed. <laughs> yes, and it and turns out. Turns out she actually That survived. was a nice twist. I like the way they handled yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> 
there's also the uh, the whole finale of this movie where it's revealed that the pumpkin is a mother. Yeah, and has and a has whole bunch of pumpkins. pumpkin babies that they have to remove and kill. And I gotta be honest, I was conflicted. I'm like, okay, yeah, these things are dangerous, but you're committing pumpkin genocide right now, and pumpkin genocide is what started this whole thing to begin yeah, with. Yeah, I'm sitting there going like, I feel like these characters should be looking at each other, wondering if they're the baddies. Cause, yeah, because let's get real. Why did the pumpkin kill everybody? Because it was slaughtering their people. He, he was taken to this fucking location where he was watching all his people, or all her people, getting butchered. Get, get, getting butchered, yeah. <laughs> nah, just, uh, just run him over with a lawnmower. This, <sighs> this is a movie that is secretly pro-genocide. <laughs> Justice for pumpkins. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's the hashtag. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Justice for pumpkins. Right there. I am on team pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> she did nothing wrong. <laughs> If you want a deep analysis of this movie, there isn't one to give because it's not that no, kind of movie. No, ain't that kind of picture. <laughs> you either in you're either on the wavelength of its stupidity or you're not, and we very much are. <laughs> So yeah, uh, anything else you want to talk about in the spoiler section? No, I, uh, I think that's basically it. Stupid Halloween movie, like, through and through. Yep. Uh, you should still check it out. Yeah. You know, you don't have to wait till Halloween. That's because of the nature of streaming. We're still in the pumpkin season, even though it's not Halloween. So it's still relevant to yeah, the see, current that, time. I think that should be the sequel, Thanksgiving. Because ah, pumpkin pies. Pumpkin pies. Pumpkin pies. Ooh. You know, come on. Make oh, it yeah. happen. Yeah, a carved two set around Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. The ideas are flowing in my head already. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Make it happen. Make it happen, Tulu. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, where can they find you, Count Jackula? Oh, you can find me here on YouTube, where I stream at 7 o'clock pretty much every weekday, or weeknight, rather. How about you? Y'all know me. I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, Blue Sky, wherever. Just look up the Horror Guru or Blood Splattered Cinema, and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you'd like to help out either of us more directly, be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way, but we will certainly accept more. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, if you made it this far into the vlog, then I want you to comment below and be sure to comment below using one of the two hashtags, justice for pumpkin or she did nothing wrong. Use either of those hashtags and that way I know, that way Jack knows, that way the whole world knows that you are on the right side of pumpkin history, my friends. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, peace out and we'll catch y'all later.